Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of Satan and bound him for a thousand years. Surrounded by the world they ruin, Satan and his angels find themselves bound on earth for a thousand years. They are imprisoned on this dark, desolate, and abysmal planet. Alone with his demons, Satan must simply wait and ponder his future punishment. On every side he beholds mangled cities, scorched forests, and dry bones, all the terrible results of his war against heaven. Bound, as it were, in one vast bottomless pit, with no one to tempt or manipulate, he is absolutely miserable. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. While Satan is left to contemplate his fate, the redeemed enjoy the unspeakable glories of heaven. They each meet their guardian angels, who answer their many questions regarding their lives on earth. Then God, in an act of ultimate disclosure, invites them to participate as judges, opening before them all the records of the lost. The redeemed now have the opportunity to see for themselves why certain people they expected to see in heaven are not there. The hidden thoughts of the lost are now vividly exposed, and the veil is pulled aside, revealing spiritual battles that rage for every soul. Even the actions and motives of fallen angels are clearly seen. The open and transparent character of God in this matter is remarkable. As Paul foretold in 1 Corinthians 6-2, the saved participate in the judgment of the lost. Before a single sinner receives his final punishment, his record is carefully reviewed by fellow humans who know and understand the struggles of life on earth. All the words and deeds of the wicked are weighed against the word of God. The justice of their sentence is affirmed and the degree of their punishment determined. Finally, at the end of the thousand years, Jesus and the redeemed prepare to return to earth. The time has come for Satan, his angels, and the lost to face the ultimate consequences of their actions. Soon the meek will inherit the earth, but God must first execute the final phase of his judgment and purge the universe of sin. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. After this thousand-year Sabbath in heaven, Christ and the redeemed with the new Jerusalem return to the earth. As the city draws near to the desolate planet, Jesus commands the wicked dead to rise from their dusty graves. At his word, the unsaved from every time and place now stand before God. The lost are resurrected with the same mortal bodies they possessed before their death. As Jesus descends, his feet touch the Mount of Olives. A tremendous earthquake splits the mount and transforms it into a great plain. Then the New Jerusalem, the massive city of God, descends from the heavens and its foundation comes to rest on the plain Jesus prepared for it. Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations, to gather them together to battle. Amazingly, Satan manages to deceive his followers one last time, and he rallies them to capture the heavenly city by force. Generals and military men of all ages now apply their combined skill to prepare for what is expected to be an epic battle. By this very act, 
the lost reveal that their hearts are unchanged. If possible, they would tear God from his throne and seize the holy city by force. Little do they realize that their futile war is lost before it even begins. Judgment Day has come. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and the dead were judged according to their works. Suddenly, high above the city, the Lord appears on his glorious throne. All the feeble war plans of the wicked are immediately arrested. As they gaze up into the face of God, the lost are made painfully aware of every sin they have ever committed. They recall every time they silence their conscience, every time they turn from the pleadings of the Holy Spirit. Some had gone to the grave believing they had successfully hidden their sins of murder, crime, and vice from all. With shame they experience firsthand the words of Jesus found in Luke 12, For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. As a vivid panorama of their lives play before them, each lost soul understands completely that they have, by their own choice, rejected salvation. Tragically, the peace and happiness of those inside the city will never be theirs. The feelings of hopeless despair that sweep over them is beyond words. The rebellious can't deny God's justice in declaring them guilty. With one voice they cry out, Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. And falling prostrate, they worship the Prince of Life. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them.